Cryptocurrencies are not regulated by any one government. They're regulated by the laws of mathematics. Uh, and so um, w when, you, when you invest in, in a company, uh, and this is the Facebook IPO prospectus uh, from uh, 2012, an S1 filing. But when you invest in a company on a major stock market, you can get access to these big, big books here, uh, which are written by lawyers and investment bankers, uh, which highlights um, what the company is and discloses all the major risks or most of them. When it comes to cryptocurrencies, because they're not listed on any regulated exchange like the New York Stock Exchange or the NASDAQ, uh, what happens is cryptocurrency companies do not have to create documents like that. They're not regulated. And so when you're doing research on cryptocurrencies, a lot of people will read just the white paper, which is usually a five to 15 page PDF that explains uh, more about the, about the cryptocurrency it, itself. And if you want to learn more about cryptocurrencies, uh, you can take my cryptocurrency course or what you can do uh, is sign up for my MBA program as I have a much more up-to-date version of, of all of that stuff. Um, now, in my cryptocurrency course, and when I teach about cryptos, I provide you all, all my students, uh, with a framework of 49 steps uh, to look into how to do research on cryptos. And it's similar to the steps uh, that investment bankers use to create these things. Now, I believe, and I've always said uh, that, that cryptocurrencies are, are probably the biggest uh, threat to national security in most countries. And the reason I say that is because um, the biggest weapon that, that countries have uh, is the ability to print more money. Um, and, and if you think about it, um, you know, governments don't run like a business. Uh, and so in order for, for governments to survive longer term, what they have to do is they have to issue bonds and they sell bonds to the public, to you and, and me, all of us, and to, to big institutions. So if you buy a bond, uh, which is like a debt instrument uh, from a government, uh, what happens is you give money to the government, you get a bond, which has an interest rate, right? There's, there's got to be incentive for you to invest. The government takes the money, uses some of the money to build bridges, uh, not walls, um, uh, defend themselves, et cetera. And then they take the rest of the money out of circulation. So what's happened is... Um, that money is out of circulation now. And because there's less money out there, demand for money goes up, meaning interest rates go up. Okay. Now, think of it this way. If, if governments didn't have the ability uh, to issue bonds uh, and to change the money supply, um, then they couldn't defend themselves if, God forbid, there was a war. And so, hypothetically speaking, if we assume that everybody bought cryptocurrencies uh, instead of of, of, of fiat money, like US dollars or whatever currencies there are around the world. If people did that, then what would happen is governments wouldn't have, um, they wouldn't have the same power they have now to be able to print money to defend themselves, etc. And so, yes, the biggest threat to national security for many countries is cryptocurrencies. Um, I believe that most cryptocurrencies are a scam. That's right. Um, but there are a bunch that are wonderful investments, and I've held a bunch of them, four of them actually, for, for years, and I'm never, ever selling them. Um, I'll never tell you. I might have mentioned on a previous webcast what I own, but I want you all to do your own research, please.